Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a great, great joy to be connected to you again on your favorite Goliath devotion. Of course, this is your Center for Biblical Authoritative Teachings. We have been looking at the subject of enjoying God. And uh, I'm sure for some of you, this is the first time you're hearing this. But this has been God's dream for you. God did not make you. And you are not born again in Christ to a frustrating life. The Lord have not heard this. But that's truth. This is what God has sent us to do in the whole world. Bringing the body of Christ to truth. That will help you live the best life God has for you. You see, the life in Christ is not all about, oh, I know Christ and one day, one day I'll go to heaven. So do you mean that all of salvation or all of that, the thing Jesus did, did not take care of things on the earth and that's only waiting for one day, one day in heaven? No, that's not what the Bible teaches. It's not because we want to introduce it in. The Bible doesn't teach that. Receiving Christ makes you a new type of being. And you begin to express that life here. It's that amazing divine life. And it's not about a life where God is always meeting your needs. One drop here, one drop there. No, it's a life of absolute abundance. A life where you actually grow beyond the needs of this world. Because of the greatness of the heavenly treasures that you are feasting on. In fact, let me just read this scripture we just, uh, the Lord just brought into my heart right now. Colossians, you know, I keep on telling you that when we are sharing, when I'm sharing with you, a fellowship is going on. So it's like I'm the presenter of a radio something from heaven where the Holy Ghost is the executive producer. So right now, see, the executive producer just said, read this, and I'm going to read it to you. He said that um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, from the Passion translation says that Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. This is why we are to yearn for all that is above. For that's where Christ sits enthroned at the place of all power, all honor, and authority. Says, we are to yearn for that which is above. Yearn, a strong desire. Then he said that, yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm. Did you see that? You are supposed to get to a place where you feast on the treasures of the heavenly realm. At that level, you are not thinking about how much money is in your bank account, whether there is money for you. You are not thinking about whether, I mean, whether there's an outbreak on the end, you're not thinking about hatred. No, those things, you've gone beyond that. You are now feasting, feasting, you understand? Feasting on the realities of the heavenly realm. This is the life you've been called to. And this is not supposed to happen when you step physically into heaven. This is to happen now. How can you come here? Except you are taught. And that's what the glad devotion does. This is why you must become a serious partner with the glad devotion. One, by praying fervently for the spread, the penetration of this message for the body of Christ and the rest of the world. And two, by recommending it, sharing it, make sure many more are watching and listening and reading. Then by taking it to other networks, radio networks, television networks, social media platforms, 
and pay him to get it to, to be done. So on the subject of enjoying God, we made it clear that you must enjoy God because that's what God ordained you for. And you begin to enjoy God by first getting awakened to his presence in you, learning to maintain the consciousness of that presence in you, and then learning to have the right perspective of God, seeing God the right way. And today we'll try to round up on the subject by looking at move into real Christianity. So if you want to enjoy God, move from unrealistic Christianity into real Christianity. And I'm going to show you what that means. If you move into real Christianity, there's no way you will not enjoy God. But if you are living in the ordinary, um, unrealistic, humanistic, frustrating Christianity, you will never enjoy God no matter how much you pray. But if you move into real Christianity, boy, it becomes like if you move into your arena. You know, it's like if you take a fish out of water, that fish is struggling and doing many things to survive. The moment you get it back into the water, it's like the fish is saying, oh, wow, I have now arrived. Glory to God. That's how it is. When you move into what is real Christianity, it's like your spirit says, wow, I have now arrived. And your spirit begins to bask. When we say your spirit, we mean you now. You begin to bask in the joy of God. But until you step into real Christianity, you will struggle with many things. And, and when we share things like this, they become a struggle for you because you want to enjoy God, but you are just still in unrealistic Christianity. It's not going to work. Are you ready for today? Then let's share the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for you are ready to usher us into real Christianity by your word. Hallelujah. Praise God. So move into real Christianity is our topic today. Our main scripture is 1 Peter 2. Verse 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says that as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. That ye may grow thereby. The first thing we want to look at here is that you cannot have a consistent enjoyment of God outside the word. You can't have a consistent enjoyment of God outside his word. We said for many Christians, the Bible is a confusing and difficult book to understand. When people do not have access to the sincere word of God, they fall into such an unfortunate state. I know people who really want to read their Bibles. But they take the Bible, they don't know what to read. Sometimes they read something and the team bothers the understanding, it seems to contradict what they've been hearing. They take something else and they seem to flow. The next time, they, so they just don't, a lot of people don't even know how to read their Bibles. It's not an interesting book to read. Should they read the Deuteronomies? Should they read the Genesis? Should they read the Jeremiah's? Should they read the Revelations? I mean, they don't know where to read. And so the Bible seems to be confusing. And this is where the responsibility of the shepherd comes in. The Bible says that the shepherds will be judged much more strictly than the people. Why? Jesus rebuked the Pharisees and said, Woe to them, says, you do not enter and you, prevent, you took away the key of knowledge. Because all those who have no understanding of the scriptures are dependent on the, on the shepherds upon whom grace has been poured to understand the scriptures. That's why if you are a shepherd and you are not studying to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word, you are actually bringing judgment upon yourself. Because the Bible says, I will give you shepherds who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. He says, knowledge should be learned from the lips of the priest. That means that the inability of the people to understand scripture is no excuse. God has given shepherds. But when the shepherd does not bring understanding, then there's a problem. It means whatever the people suffer for lack of knowledge, the shepherd will have a dividend in the suffering. This is why it's very good. This is why we have, we have started a school of relevant ministry 
If you are a minister of God, you need to be trained. So look out for the next edition and then be a part of it. Right, so if people don't get the sincere word of God, then they, they, ha- they don't get a right priming, so they are unable to enjoy the word of God. And yet without the enjoyment of God's word, you can't enjoy God. We're talking about the fact that move into real Christianity. A real Christianity is one in which you enjoy God's word. Until the word of God is in perspective for you. Because see, oh, your life is, life is, your life is not just 30 minutes of something. It's a whole time. Days and weeks and, I mean, hours, days and weeks and years. So nobody can actually teach you the nitty gritties of life. It's, it's left to you. But your understanding of scripture makes everything just fall in perspective. So you cannot enjoy God outside of his word. And many don't enjoy the word of God because they don't have the sincere milk of the word. Now, when the Bible said that as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, the word sincere milk there means milk that is unadulterated, pure milk. Pure milk. Now, let me try to explain to you what unadulterated means. <laughs> when it comes to the Bible, the unadulterated word of God does not refer only to something that is not in the Bible that somebody is introducing to the Bible. No. It also refers to wrongly mixed word or wrongly divided word. What does that mean? So when somebody says, oh, this is pure word of God, unadulterated, it means that they are saying the person is quoting from scriptures. That alone doesn't make the word sincere. Even if someone is still quoting from the Bible by mixing Old Testament with New Testament, confusing dispensational dealings, that thing is still not sincere. The people cannot grow by that. Are you following that? And that is where the challenge comes in. Because a good number of people, all that they want to see is, is the person reading the Bible. If the person is reading from the Bible, they say, oh, he's preaching the Bible. And yet they are confused. But I told you, as for the Bible, it contains so much of God's dealings with many kinds of people. If you don't know how to fish our present truth out of the Bible, you get confused. There are religions that are fighting against Christianity and they are not using any book by the Bible. There are people who claim they are intellectuals who don't even want to believe in the Bible because they use the, the Bible itself against the Bible. <laughs> I told you of drunkards. There are a lot of scriptures in their pockets they can pull for you for which they should drink. This book, Daddy Holy Spirit, is a classic on how to walk with the Holy Spirit. Walking with the Holy Ghost is very important in being relevant in this final book. And this book is to help get the Holy Spirit restored to His place in our lives as our Father and restored to the church as the Father of the church and to be able to walk with Him. And everyone must have a copy. Your life will never be the same. Do you have a copy of this month's Emancipator? The Emancipator is a tool by which millions will receive truth and be born again. The entire body of Christ will come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to live as icons of Christ. Call 0249-293688 to order for your hard copies today or visit finalglobalmovement.org to download a free soft copy.
You see, so that something is in the Bible is one. But is that thing being understood in line with present truth? Maybe some people think that present truth is not something that is in the Bible. Let me show you. You need to understand why we keep on uh, stressing on present truth. It means that not all the truth in the Bible is present truth. If I read to you 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says that, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and ye be, and be established in the present truth. That means there, was a, there are truths in the Bible that are not present truth. And there are truths, so there are truths in the Bible that have passed. For instance, Moses built a tabernacle. It's a truth in the Bible, but it is past. That Moses built a tabernacle does not mean that you should go to mountain for 40 years waiting for God to show you another tabernacle. It's not going to happen. Are you following that? Okay. An angel will blow a trumpet and one fourth of the rivers will turn into blood. That's truth in the Bible, but that's yet to come. Antichrist will come and give the mark of the beast. That's truth in the Bible, but it's yet to come. It's not present truth. Are you following this? So, that's why we taught you so much on dispensations. You need to know at what point in time am I alive? And what does the scripture say about this time? When you get to know the times you are alive and what the scriptures say, then now you can go backwards and look at how did God deal with the people and you learn the principles and you can even go forward. How will God deal with the people in the future and you learn lessons for now? So the whole of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is a book that you can learn from and live. But what you should be established in is the present truth. So if someone is teaching the Bible, you are reading your Bible. The fact that you are reading Bible doesn't mean that you are getting uh, unadulterated milk. I get in that. If it is Bible, but you are mixing past truth with present truth, with future truth, you're still insincere. In other words, it is not very clean for your growth. Are you getting this? This is why we so much thank God for the good life devotion where you receive interpretation of scriptures of past truth in relation to present truth and interpretation of future truth in relation to present truth. That's what we call, you see, humanistics is not, humanity is a big word, but it simply means Bible interpretation. A lot of people go to Bible school to study Bible interpretation and they want to find some mysterious way of interpreting scripture. The basis for biblical interpretation is present truth. You cannot correctly interpret scriptures if you don't understand the times in which you are and where you are in the scriptures. So the truth of a scripture and its application is relative to the time of your being alive. Why did I say all this? To let you know that to be able to enjoy God, you need to be able to enjoy his word. And to enjoy his word, you must be fed on the sincere milk, the unadulterated truth. And that does not mean something, uh, it uh, doesn't mean something that is not in the Bible that somebody is saying only. It can be in the Bible, but if it is not present truth, it is not sincere word. And until a child of God is able to understand present truth, you can understand the Bible and you are not in real Christianity. Real Christianity is a Christianity where, oh my God, you take your Bible and you are reading and you are enjoying it. That is where the joy of God comes in. I remember just this morning, I, I was reading Isaiah and I started with chapter one. And I was just so blessed because I, I was actually seeing the church as the prophet was addressing Jerusalem and Israel. You see, so the prophet was addressing Jerusalem and Israel, but as you study now, you can see how does that apply to the church today? Because God was talking to his people, today who are his people that he's dealing with? He's dealing with the church. It is after the rapture, then you go back and deal with Israel and round up the, the times for the ushering into the eternal kingdom. But if you don't know this, why you are reading Isaiah? That's why they say, oh, our, our righteousness is as a filthy rags. Oh, God is unable to hear your prayer because not that his ears are small or his hands are short because of your sins. They are carrying all that Isaiah said about the Old Testament people into the church. 
But what did God say about the sons of God? So we said here that endeavor to understand the word of God rightly. If there is anything that is important in your enjoyment of God, it is your endeavoring to understand the word of God. Now, to understand the word of God, I won't deceive you. It is not something that comes by just blowing air on you or laying hands on you to fall under the power or praying for you. You must give yourself to consistent reading and studying the word. And this is where the good life devotion comes in. So we are not, we are not trying to brag about good life devotion. We are, we, 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 I mean, to brag is not part of our nature. We are telling you the truth. Because this is Monday to Friday on Joy Prime TV, on Light TV, on Vision One FM, on Touch FM, OT FM, Ajinkwa FM, Light, Light, Light FM. And we are coming more and more to other stations. It's Monday to Friday. Why is it so? To help you subject yourself to a consistent listening, a consistent watching. Until your mind is renewed to grasp present truth, then why you take your Bible? That's why we don't like it when you meet us and say, so, Oh, we have been watching the Global Devotion, just that we are not consistent. That's not correct. Don't watch Monday and Friday or once in a month. That will not help you. Make sure there are not many programs on TV that run Monday to Friday, except those world things that television stations and radio owners are promoting instead of promoting the good life devotion or the truth of God's word. The reason why we have chosen to invest so much to bring it to you from Monday to Friday, teaching you on various aspects of the same subject, is so that you can get what it means to have present truth. And that requires you to sit down, taking your notebook and pen, put some effort into it, endeavor to understand the word of God rightly. I am beseeching you by the mercies of God. If you don't get to understand the word of God rightly, you won't enjoy your Bible. You won't enjoy God. That's why sometimes I'm, I'm surprised. There's a Christian program that will teach people. They will not come. Then people have programs to laugh, entertainment. The same Christians are flocking there. Why? They want to relax. They say they are under pressure, they are stressed. And yet the word of God should give them much more relaxation. Because they don't understand and they don't want to pay attention. I'm not, I won't deceive you. Understanding the right perspective of the word doesn't come by just sitting down and dozing up. You ought to be serious with the word of God. And if you have something like the good light devotion, bringing you this truth, you don't have an excuse on the judgment day because we have paid to come your way. Yours was to wake up early and sit down or late in the evening and sit down or afternoon and sit down and listen daily. It's just 30 minutes. Your life will never be the same. Maybe I should end up here on the subject of enjoying God. Number one, are you born again? Get awakened. Come alive to the presence of God. By getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Number two, learn to maintain a consciousness of that presence of God by consistently responding to his incessant fellowship in you. Number three, learn to understand God, to see God from the right perspective by understanding his love for his children. Then number four is Learn to enjoy God in the word. If you do these things, your level will move higher. Your Christianity will go beyond God heal me, God do me this. For, for those who have been praying for enemies to die, you begin to laugh because that's a lower, lower, lower primary. Because at that level, you aren't dealing with enemies and my auntie. No, no, no. You have, you have even passed that level. You've, got, you've passed the level of being asking God for money and the rest. You are not dealing with enjoying God. Don't begin to me, I know my level and just settle there. Grow. There is a level God wants you to get to. It's the level of, when I read to you that scripture, it says, feel your thoughts. It says, feast on heavenly things. Feel your thoughts with the realities of the heavenly realm. Oh, begin to pray right now. Pray and say, Father, my eyes are opened. My mind is opened. I am positioned on the journey of enjoying you. Nothing will stop me. Talk to him right now.
Manda gabo segere gezua. La bricon teli gazun tele bagadoshe. Bali krakon dele ru sandi gadu zimahandondia. Thank you, Holy Ghost. All your people who have watched Lagiro and Dele Bosata are ushered into a place of enjoying you. There's an upgrade in the body of Christ by these nuggets of divine truth that have been released into the whole world. We love you, Father, and we bless you. Glory to God. If you have been watching me on today's episode, have you received Jesus? Are you born again? Do you know in your heart that you have really been born again? If not, you are born again today. Born again means getting adopted into the family of God. Moving out of humanity into divinity. Being born of God. What does it take? Believe in your heart that Jesus is the person God appointed from the beginning of the world that by him you will be born of God into the family of God. And then declare him as Lord. I can help you make a confession. If you want to do that, I can say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart, I do believe that you are God's chosen person by whom I can be born of God. I declare you as Lord of my life today. And I know I am born again. Hallelujah. If you have done that with all your heart, you are born again. Get planted in a Bible teaching church and remain in Christ as it comes. If you are wondering where to, to fellowship, you can call the numbers on the screen. And if you are in Ghana, somebody will pick it up and direct you to one of our nearest uh, fellowships, you, and you are assured of remaining in Christ till he comes. Till we meet again as we take another subject and look at it from the perspective of God, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.